To learn more about earning college credits with study hall courses, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link in the description. Anyone who's down too much caffeine during an all-night study session or come off of a long hike absolutely famished and hangry knows that we don't always think the same way all the time. Our bodies and minds change depending on what's going on inside and outside us. That means we've kind of become different people. Even if we don't actually hulk out and grow deltoids befitting a Greek god, just like the Hulk can feel powerful, we can feel more alert or more sluggish because of changes in our environments and biology. And sometimes our awareness changes dramatically. We can feel out of touch with reality or fully present in the moment. So while we all experience awareness, it can vary a lot. That's the nature of being aware, of consciousness. So maybe you aren't just you. Maybe you're a combination of different yous. And researchers are still working on understanding this complex facet of our lives. Hi. I'm Deja Fitzgerald, and this is Study Hall, Intro to Psychology. Consciousness is our awareness of what's going on within us and around us. That's kind of vague, but that's because there's a ton of complexity within consciousness. Part of that complexity is that awareness isn't all or nothing. We can be aware of things to different degrees, ranging from being spaced out to being hypervigilant. Though I should mention that not all scientists agree on this. Some believe that consciousness is more black and white, aware or not. But for simplicity's sake, we're gonna go with the degrees theory for this episode. And no matter which theory you're going with, how much we're aware, what we're aware of, and how much we remember from being aware can vary a lot even over the course of a single day. That's partly due to our biological rhythms, specific changes that happen in our bodies due to changes in environment and the passage of time. For instance, let's say Louise is sleeping in on Saturday. His roommate Rod is clanging pots and pans in the kitchen while making breakfast. Once Louise is no longer sleeping super deeply, he starts hearing the commotion and smelling eggs frying, even as he continues to sleep lightly. So Louise has some awareness of sounds and odors. But sensing something and remembering it are generally two different processes when it comes to our brains. Like yesterday, when Luis got home and realized that he didn't remember turning onto his street at all. After Luis has woken up and gotten his Saturday going, he experiences what we often think of as conscious awareness, being aware of and responsive to things around him. This is usually called wakefulness. And this high degree of awareness allows Luis to run his weekend errands and enjoy a game of ultimate frisbee with his friends. Then of course, wakefulness eventually gives way to sleep. That's in part thanks to circadian rhythms, a group of biological rhythms that repeat over a 24 hour period. Circadian rhythms happen in most living things and in humans, they're influenced by our surroundings, like the blue light emitted by our screens or things like jet lag or working a night shift. In the evening, Luis starts to get drowsy entering a state called quiet wakefulness, which helps you get ready to sleep. This is because of the hormone melatonin, which is secreted in response to darkness and helps regulate the sleep-wake cycle. It doesn't make you go to sleep, but it helps you get there. And as drowsiness takes hold, that changes Louise's consciousness again. He's no longer as alert as he was earlier in the day. It's also worth noting that blind individuals often experience out of sync circadian rhythms because of their inability to see light, which can make them sleepy or wide awake at the wrong times. Some scientists are experimenting with administering melatonin regularly to help those rhythms stay in sync. So as we've seen with Louise, consciousness changes over time and we experience different states of consciousness, which are different degrees of awareness of our own bodies and our surroundings. And Louise is about to slip into an incredibly important state of consciousness, sleep. Sleep is a state of consciousness when our sensory awareness is dialed way down. During sleep, our bodies undergo changes in order to rest and repair, and that makes sleep crucial. But just like consciousness isn't as simple as just being awake, sleep is also complicated and interesting. Our brains have different patterns of electrical activity called brain waves, and they change predictably during sleep, playing out in distinct stages. It all starts when we relax enough to enter stage one of sleep. That's exactly what happens for Luis after he's gotten into his PJs and turned off the light so he can just relax in bed. Stage one marks a shift from wakefulness. As Luis passes through this stage, he has lower muscle tension, a lower breathing rate, lower body temperature, and a slower heartbeat. As he moves into stage two, there's more relaxation, and Luis has more lower frequency brain waves. 
Interestingly, short bursts of high-frequency brain waves called sleep spindles are also present in stage two. Researchers have found that people have more sleep spindles after learning certain tasks, and the number of sleep spindles is related to how well those tasks are remembered. And you may have heard of stages one and two referred to as light sleep. Then, deep sleep happens in stage three, when brain waves of even lower frequency play out in Luisa's brain. Now, if Raj makes a racket in the kitchen while fixing a midnight snack, Luisa's gonna wake up groggy. This is one reason why short cat naps of 30 minutes or less can be more refreshing than longer naps. Waking up out of stage three can leave you feeling really out of it. Then there's debate about a few other stages of sleep, but the one we all think about is rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep. The brain waves in this stage resemble the ones we have when we're awake, but in REM sleep, the body is essentially motionless, except for those rapidly moving eyes. All these stages together make up a sleep cycle, and Louise goes through a sleep cycle every 90 minutes or so. Now, there's also a somewhat mysterious aspect of sleep we can dive into. Dreams. A dream is a state of consciousness during sleep when we have rich imaginary experiences. And it's not just dreams that are part of human nature. A fascination with dreams is also a timeless part of who we are. Though we can have really boring dreams about, say, taking a test at school, we also have fantastical dreams that make us wonder, why do I keep dreaming about someone taking my sweet roll or shooting arrows at my knees? With the range of sensory detail and emotional qualities, dreams show it that this state of consciousness may be a particular kind of awareness, one that allows us to experience the limitless possibilities of the mind. No wonder cultures throughout the world have developed sophisticated perspectives on dreams. Like a hunter-gatherer group in the Peruvian Amazon have dreams that foretell the names of their children, and noticing names and dreams is important to them. And in the Philippines, dreams have traditionally been seen as a way for a person's essence to experience something new elsewhere, and even communicate with other souls and spirits. And Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung thought that dreams were where we access the collective unconscious, a kind of common memory that we all share, full of instincts and common ideas about humanity. And more recent perspectives on dreams are varied. Now, some sleep researchers hold the view that dreams are a safe space for us to simulate potential threats and work through emotional experiences. On the other hand, there are also researchers who think dreams aren't meaningful, just the nonsensical firing of neurons as we sleep. So while we can agree that dreams are the result of the time we spend in the sleeping state of consciousness, there are various perspectives on the role dreams play in our lives. So we don't know exactly why we dream, but dreams make it clear that consciousness changes during sleep in a way that's similar to how consciousness changes throughout the day. Wild as they can be, dreams aren't our only experience of what's sometimes known as altered states of consciousness. These other states of consciousness are psychological states that are significantly different from wakefulness, but don't involve sleep. Even though you might feel like you're in a pretty extreme psychological state when you're hangry, altered states of consciousness are psychological states that transform awareness. For example, some people are able to enter a highly focused and relaxed state called hypnosis where they might be more receptive to suggestions to change their thoughts, behavior, perceptions, or sensations. They can tell us a lot about the nature of the mind, especially since there are a variety of other states and various ways to produce them. Take meditation which refers to a variety of different practices that can include allowing thoughts to pass through the mind gently while focusing on the breath. Meditation, practiced over time, can create a state of calm with lower blood pressure and heart rate and slower breathing. Studies of people who meditate frequently show that their brains are changed by meditation practice, and they report better emotional regulation and lower stress even when they are in a state of meditation. Psychoactive or brain-influencing substances can make humans feel like they're no longer experiencing ordinary wakefulness. They can do this by relieving pain, boosting energy, or dampening self-control or self-inhibition. And while words like psychoactive might bring to mind hallucinogenic drugs like lysergic acid, better known as LSD, in the 1960s counterculture of movements in the United States, well, actually, you're not that far off. In fact, scientists have started studying the effects of really tiny doses of LSD to manage depression and anxiety in some people who don't respond to other treatment options. While research studies appear promising, it's very new, and it's difficult to do because of existing laws around psychedelic use in many countries. Of course, scientific research studies aren't the only way of knowing the world, and you might be familiar with psychoactive medicinal plants used by indigenous communities in religious ceremonies and cultural practice. For example, peyote is a traditional medicinal plant used by some indigenous communities in North America. It can be used to numb a toothache as a topical analgesic or as part of a healing ceremony. P. 
People might hear that and think that this would be great to use or study, even if they're not a member of an indigenous community. But before we take plants and their uses out of historic and cultural contexts, it's important to consider what is and is not respectful to the communities that have used these plants for so long. This is part of the challenge of desacralization, or the process of making something secular and no longer sacred. Just as we discussed in our episode on diverse ways of knowing, researchers need to truly listen to the experiences and preferences of a community before they use an aspect of an important cultural tradition outside of its context. So, as an organ that can improve itself and our overall well-being, the brain is an amazing part of the human body. Studies of different states of consciousness, especially those that are part of millennia-long traditions, are crucial to understanding the kinds of awareness we can experience. As we've seen, we're not just people who turn on when we wake up and turn off to sleep. And that gives us a more full-fledged view of what it means to be human, a person in the world. So while we don't turn into green muscular superheroes, we do transform multiple times a day. And just like it was important for Bruce Banner to understand his alter ego, it's important for us to know our different states of consciousness and the roles they play in our lives. Understanding consciousness is a millennia long journey and one that we are still on, but hopefully we can use the wisdom we gain to improve our experiences of awareness, that crucial and ever changing facet of being human. If you're enjoying Study Hall, Intro to Psychology, and are interested in taking an online course and earning college credit, visit gostudyhall.com or click this button to learn more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.